hello everyone online if you can't hear us at any point please um do some kind of response and i'll i'll see if i can fix things uh, I really do. can i review this one yeah yeah okay great it looks like everything's good so welcome to our first briefing session of um this our first briefing seminar of this session thank you so much for everyone for coming just like to say we've got an extra bonus gripping seminar on tuesday at 2 p.m so everyone please come to that and now i'd like to hand over to poppy to introduce our speakers brilliant um and i realized with the clever owl i don't actually need to move um thank you very much it's my absolute pleasure to introduce professor louis albert trium Trenti, who is a professor in parasitology at the university of yaoundi one yaoundi one because there are more than one university in yaoundi yeah. um in cameroon and he is also the head of the control program for schistosomiasis and soil transmitted helminths for the whole of Cameroon, as well as doing a lot of academic research. And today he's going to be talking about some of the interspecific interactions um, for human schistosomiasis. So thank you very much, Lou. Okay. Uh, thank you very much, Poppy. Uh, thanks for inviting me to give this talk. Uh, also, thank you all of you for participating in this presentation. Uh, when Poppy asked me to present something for this talk. I thought, uh, what is the audience? And depend on the audience, we have to have something more scientific, not able to control. But all went to, uh, goes together. So the title is Interspecies Interaction and Competition in Human Schizomiasis. Uh, this is a very wide topic, but I will just focus on some of our research to highlight some of the aspects. Otherwise, you have to go uh, very widely. First of all, the interest is the control of the schistosomiasis. And this is a summary of the global uh, burden of schistosomiasis in the world. Uh, we have 78 endemic countries. Uh, 51 of these countries uh, have moderate and um, severe transmission and therefore provide preventive chemotherapy with uh, master administration. And more than 236 million people in need of uh, this master administration uh, live. Uh, uh, in the world. Uh, over 90% of people requiring this uh, mass administration live in Africa. So Africa is the continent, the highest burden of schizomiasis. Uh, we have six species of uh, schizoma that uh, infect human, uh, the rest of the human. Uh, four of these occur in Africa. So we have Manisonai, Chematobium, Intercalatum, and Guineasis that occur in Africa. Uh, for example, in Cameroon, we have three of these species. We have Mansonite, Chematobium, and Guineasis. And then we have Japonicum and Mikongai. Now, just you recall, because uh, some of you are not uh, working on schisto, uh, to have an idea of what is schisto and the life cycle. When you have the life cycle of schisto, it's very simple. Because you have human, you have the snail, you have the water, and then you have the environment contaminated by the human and this is life cycle. In this way, it's very simple, but it is a very complex life cycle. And this complexity has to be very well understood if you want to control the disease. And also, you want to understand the transmission. I will start by this the two hosts and the clean environment. We have the human, we have the snail, and you have the water. So, the life cycle, I will start from human. What happened in human? You have other worms in human. And then at each stage, I will show you a small a bar. I will imagine that the length of the bar corresponds to the population of the parasite at one stage. So we have very few worms that will infect the human. Let's say 10 or 10 worms. Then this 10 worm will produce a lot of eggs. So we have a significant amplification of the number of <coughs> output of the parasite from few worms. A couple of worms will produce about 300 eggs per day. Uh, some species will have even more. So but if you have 10,000 eggs in a human, only part of these eggs will succeed to be excreted out of the body because some of it will be in the tissue. Yeah? So in large proportion, we will kill in the human body. That's why you have to use juice. 
only few of them will reach the water because some will be on the land, there is no uh, outcome, some will be in the latrine, etc. But few reach the and few also will succeed to penetrate the snail. Here, for example, because it has too much light, we have the Mirasidia penetrating the snail. So few of them. And in the snail, some will not develop to sporosis and then also to produce a carrier. So there will also be a snail reaction to kill part of this. And then we have all these asexual reproduction, fantastically. You have a lot of secari that can be produced. Then here are the number of spores. There. And then some of this secari, that a fraction of this secari will be expelled out of the snake, so the shedding, and then it will be in the water. And only a few secari will succeed penetrate in the human. A large proportion will also be killed by the human reaction. Immunity, etc., and then we come back to ten, and the cycle starts again. So this cycle is very fantastic because you have two important things. The first important is that we have the amplification from few the couple of parasites. You have lots of eggs, and then you have a reduction because lot of eggs, and then you have reduction, and then you have the transition, and the transition is made by few also very few eggs. In the water and very few minerals that will be in the snail. And then the amplification again in the snail, and then transmission with very few secari in the human, and then massive amplification. <coughs> we have many factors that will intervene, adverse factors, climatic, physical, chemical, humidity. You have biotic factors, interaction in the principles, snail interaction, etc. And then you have the human behavior. We have the socioeconomic factors. So, all this will make the life cycle of very, very complex. And this will have an impact on the control. So, even if you want to do a model of the transmission, you have to take all this into the consideration. Otherwise, you will never succeed. And this is why the control the disease, despite mass of administration every year, we still have the transmission. And some foresight are maintained. Like there was no intervention. Come back, you have the same result. First of all, this complexity. So, this complexity, our contribution is that we've been through this life cycle with different components. <coughs> uh, we conduct study in all these different areas. She's the interaction, definitive post, access of clean water, health education, preventive chemotherapy, uh, precision mapping, health education, um, environmental snail control. So my team, my friend, <coughs> all this area. So we are investigating this in a comprehensive manner, not just one aspect, but all. Uh, I will just highlight some of this research. This is the one that we did uh, to demonstrate the impact of the installation of water pump in the uh, uh, interruption of transmission in one transmission area. And since then, there is no transmission anymore. Just because it provides this water to the environment and also we have education, this transmission stops. And this are very rare that this can happen. We have another uh, factor that is the transmission dynamics. Many times you have the same intervention everywhere, but the dynamics are not the same. We have a, an environment like this where we have people living in the island. And some are living in the mainland. Here, yeah, it's the mainland. But in the island, the population living in the island, there is no school, there is no health, there is nothing. They have to cross every day to do all their activities, school, going to hospital in the mainland. So these people are in contact with what at least children twice a day. So since they come back, some will be four times, some will be there. Fisher will be there every time. So when we have the, this one, we have intensive transmission, we have high prevalence. When you trip, you come back six months later, you have the same result. Uh, then it was important to understand what should be done to enter the transmission in this typical area. And then you also have the urogenital and uh, 
has been SDH in this area. And then it goes by the map of snail because the distribution of snail along this large is not uniform. There are some areas where you have snail and the other place is snail. So this is important to understand all this to understand the transmission dynamic. Then we use so the water contact is very important also to monitor the water contact. So we use uh, the GPS device, uh, pinpointing here, looking on the population, and then we can trace their movement and then you know exactly where it was water contact. And we match this with the presence of snail, uh, also the infection, and then you know exactly where are the highest transmission zone, and then we can have more action in this area. Then this is one of the same where we have a the different mapping of snail, and then we know exactly relating to the water contact point, and then the snail micro infection, and it can intervene. And then we have a hotspot. Here, for example, we're discussing this morning is a Here is a hotspot because we treat we have the same level. But now the intervention in the hotspot should not be the same as elsewhere. This hotspot, before we start the quantum project, we have this partition. You see over here was above. Every time above uh, 50%. But since we start to count down project based on the integral intervention, as I mentioned, the hospital now was maintained below 50% because we took for the community to the community. We keep twice, twice a year. We also have intervention on the uh, snail, rehabilitation, etc. And then we maintain. Uh, unfortunately, we have to stop in this area because this is in the southwest region and the region where we have. Uh, uh, stability to current stability and the kingdom, and then we're not able to conduct the uh, since uh, four years. We're not able to move forward in this area. But you see, with all this integral intervention, with all what are present before, you can identify the key factor for the transmission and then design a proper uh, intervention for the control. We also have uh, this pressure map. Uh, so we were well, proud of this because we were the first to demonstrate the importance of mapping and to go forward for elimination. Because you want to move to elimination, you need to know exactly where the disease is. You want to extend the treatment, you also need to know exactly because otherwise you drop the water stocks, etc. So this is also important to know this. Uh, efficacy of transit counter is also important because we have all these different settings. Uh, again, it's the Goma Mansona. In one area, again, hematobium in one another area, and then in a mixed infection, we don't have the same pattern. In this mixed infection, you have different pattern of reinfection. And um, so all this show also in all settings, you have a very good risk and efficacy. Uh, we have different reinfection pattern and transmission dynamic in all different uh foci. So this means that each transmission focus is completely different from the other. You have to understand the transmission focus if you want to. Properly define how to target your intervention and to control the disease. I have a problem. Sometimes you say you have to stop. This is one of the high example. We have high prevalence up to 60, 62%. After treatment, you reduce the prevalence below 5, 3%. You read 3%. And then when you read 3%, <coughs> There was a dilemma. Why are you continuing to treat? The support and will support. No, they don't need to treat because uh, it's below the threshold. They say, no, you have to treat. But because of the funding, etc., funding stopped, uh, intervention stopped there uh, after two, when we reached this prevalence. And then when we come back to 2017, it comes back. This is a real trait for schizophrenia. Then we have also research on alternative medicine using uh, expert from medicine plan to see their efficacy from different parameters. We're not going to do that for this in particular, but you see, so there are some patients, uh, the evaluation of the schizophrenia, you see that antioxidant, et cetera, of this uh, ozoa, the fishery, et cetera. And then you have another one, uh, chlorodine. <coughs> These are the plants that are used by additional killer for inmates. So we engage in experts and continue to study. The snake parasite interaction is also very important to develop a compatibility 
uh, a lot of uh, shedding the kind of shikari, and we also demonstrate that depending on the area, you might have other interactions. And then the chronobiology of the shikari, wherever you have different uh, combination, is the same. So the peak of the snail is always between 11 and 2 p.m. for humans. This corresponds to the peak of human shizomiasis. Uh, but we also have significant difference in pectoral capacity. The number of cercari that are produced by species, species of snail, and uh, also in a specific combination of sternal parasites. So we have all these graphs showing this difference. So this is very important because the snail that shed 300 cercari and the other that shed more than 300 and regularly and live longer, 700, for example, this is 380. It's not the same. So these are very important factors. Then now focus on this component. In human. So now, based on this component human, mating is okay. This is uh, where I start my PhD, my mating behavior. Uh, when I start a PhD, uh, I was giving another topic. Where I start my organization, I said to my supervisor, she said, because he was reading the whole book, that one she's going to pair, they remain faithful for just on the death. When I realized that no, 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 I can have a proper study design to demonstrate what I will show you. Uh, these have been published in the media. These are some of the reference. One more interesting will that demonstrate the different interaction between species and also the meeting behavior of species. Uh, this work led, led to several preliminary discoveries. And then I will just focus on three of the discoveries. The first is the choice of mates. If you put you give a choice to the red, uh, the blue, the blue is one species, the red another species. So you have the men, the men have two females of two different species. How we did make here? What is, is there any choice? They are random. Blue here is in the Calatum, a guineasis, and red is Mansonal. So this male will pair exclusively to the female, the same species. So the red will take all the red. This mansona will take female mansona if they are available. This will show the mate recognition system in schistosome at this level. And this is very clear, 100 percent the most specific there. Uh, with the experiment is designed that we will already have, in this case, more female than male. So they will have most many remaining female on pair. Then this is very clear. The second was the competition for mating. For mating. So when you have two species, you have, in this case, you give the choice to two males of the different species and female of one species. In the presence of female of the same species, Mansonite male don't give any chance to integrate the male. So 100% will be pairing with a female and Mansonite. And all the male in the Calatum will have a half a chance to pair the female. But if there is no the female of, man, of uh, Mansonai, in that case, it's, it's a, this male will take over. So you, the reverse of the order is that you have the two males, but you put the female of in the Calatum. The male and Mansonai will succeed to take over to one percent female in the Calatum. Leaving many female in the Calatum and pair. But this show clearly the high competitiveness of uh, male Mansona compared to in the Calatum male. So, this also, when you have a pre established population, and this is what happened in the field, because the transmission of these companies are very dynamic, and you have a uh, in one transmission focus, you have the one species established first. Although in that case, you have in the Calatum, this properly established that transmission site. Okay. But because people are moving around, I also have the presence of vectors of the Mansonai. So one day somebody will come with uh, Mansonai, then introduce Mansonai in that site. We have a similar produce, the carry. And then when it's the infect, 
too much because the sex ratio is always in favor of male. So in definitive also we have always have all female will be dead and we always have, we have male and bear back to the sex ratio issues. So in that case, when a male mansona will arrive, the red one in a population where you already have all the female are there, you have on bare male, what will happen? The point is that male that will arrive after will succeed in pulling out the female that were already there. And then this also confirms the high competitiveness of Mansonai compared to the Kalata. The reverse is not correct. When you have the reverse, nothing happens. So if you put the red before, the affair, you put men of the other species, nothing happens. Then you have to look at the same. And then the third one is change of mates. <coughs> the change of mates, we have the same situation where we have in the absence of choice of mansional male, you have female in, in the caratom, they will pair and they will be remaining female in the caratom, not pair. But if you add female mansona after, they will reject the female that was pair before and then take their own female. This is extraordinary, all this combination. I just change the change of it. So at the end, you see, you have all this blue, uh, red will turn female blue. When you add the red, the female that was turn female because they had no choice, then they will project the female and pair with the most specific. And this is an advantage. The advantage is that the offspring of uh, the most specific pair is viable. The offspring of the most specific pair is paternogenetic, less viability, so no, no continuation. So this selection will make that Mansonite will be stronger to maintain the environment compared to integrator or to a kinesis in this case. So the conclusion show that pair schistosome bombs are not always good. <laughs> and it's very clear compared to what was written in all books. And since then, this changed all the of uh, what we asked me, why did I come to London because of this? Because this has been uh, many experiments were done on this before, um, you never succeed. Just because the protocol is not responsive to demonstrate it. So we came to London, came to London, we have to demonstrate this in many other species because this was between Mansona and uh, Kinesis. And we demonstrate that also in Mansona microbium, microbium, Matthiae, Matthiae, there are a lot of combination. Uh, the second one is that the choice of male, of male, not male. So say so yes, the choice is made by the male. If the male, I choose the female. So when you give the opportunity to female, not, not the female, but when you give the opportunity to male, it's clear. So the male, that pull away the female, not the female escaping the female. So that's very clear. And then you, then you can also see a male pair with the female, and then you have another male competing to remove What's the implication of all these things in interaction? The complication, the implication is this. It's not in the caratom, uh, is an endangered species in Cameroon. Why? Broad figure, when you observe this, before 80s, we have many transmission sites where you have a transmission of in the caratom, or finances, that will be the caratom for you. We discovered later that it was split in the kinesis and the carton later on. And then in 2003, there was only two transmission sites where had prevalence above around 5%. The others, there was nothing. So, drug is extension of the uh, intercalator in more than 80% of uh, the previous transmission sites. The factor, the first factors explaining this restriction of the finances is that the interaction when we have interaction with hematobium we have an intrusive activation and 
through the intermediacy acquisition, the outcome and the further generation will be the microbiome digestion. And we'll also maintain the black cycle in the microbiome continuously process. And then the gene of uh, integralism will disappear over the generation. Uh, for those that were in ICOPA, this also raises a question. What is the pure, what is pure hematoglobin? Because many of the foresight that we have in hematoglobin now, previously, there might be in carbon or other species where agglomeration introduces agglomeration. And then I will show you clearly the example of loop. The example, this case is very extraordinary. You have loom. It is a study site that has been investigated notionally for many years from the beginning to now. This is also the same focus where I showed the return of the infection equivalent and it's of human. Loom. Before, we don't know where the first case they had there. But before the first survey, we have zero percent of schistone, or the schistone should start from this somewhere. But before there were nothing, we don't know where. But the first survey was conducted in 68. In 68, the first survey showed that we have 44 percent, 54 percent of the prevalence in that element was in the caracol. No other species of schist at all on the integrator. The survey in 1973 demonstrates that we only have 25% of pure integrator. We have 15% of hematobium, and then the rest are hydrates. That's where we have the rest on green mixture. Uh, this white, yellow, uh, white are children that will be this. So, Hematobium was uh, integrated in this area, sometimes the gene is not here, and the 268 and the three, and we have this. But if you do the survey in 87, you have only 5% of uh, intercalatum, and then 53% of hematobium. And in 2000, there is no integratum anymore. So this is uh, very extraordinary in the evolutionary of the pattern of transmission. Because we are talking about what? When you see the replacement of species in evolution, we are talking in the phenomenon 68, 2000. How many years? So can you imagine? That this environment was completely changed within how many years? Ago? 32. 32 years was the last time of the species. It's nothing. But within 32 years, they must say that they have completely changed the epidemiology from one to another. If you survey there in this area, you will say, if you don't have this, it's true. <coughs> you don't have hematobium. But this hematobium is not sure hematobium. There's a lot of children in this. Uh, so this spectacular replacement of your true introducing application, uh, this example illustrates the impact of sexuality uh, on epidemiology. Uh, this was very clear. The second factor why integratum has a really distribution is the exclusive competition of mansion. As I mentioned before, when you have this type of setting, where you have competition between the two species, even where you have pre established integralatum, when Mantuna arrive, they will succeed in removing in hematobium, uh, not integralatum females, and the so there is no success because of this paternity affinity. And then when they will back cross with female hematobium, <coughs> female uh, Mantuna, you have only a Mantuna established two times for the competition. Uh, so this change of men and making competition between men is very clear in this paper. So the conclusion is that currently, when you survey all the countries, we only find in the only where 
phase neither microbial nor maximum. That is like the X Y Z all C only many and then very few. Uh, this is illustrated here where we have the prevalence of uh, intercalatum there uh, between 65 and to the 980s. And then in the case of in the 80s actors, you see only very few is in blue. So this composition, hybridization, uh, um, and progressive, et cetera, will. And this is the curve for loom, for example. Before you have only the, the blue one, intercalatum, intercalatum disappear progressively while microbiome is increasing in balance. Uh, this is a uh, different population. We did all the characterization, molecular characterization, etc. And based on the phylogeny of uh, the, because uh, intercalatum before at two strength, Nova Guinea strength, that occurred in Cameroon and also in the Nova Guinea area, and the uh, Zaire strength that occurred all in terms of chemical And there are two different causes. One is for students for study, the other is the proposals. And then when we have the experiment in laboratory, the abdomen between the two are not bad. And then we compare also the phylogeny and the division was very clear. That's why since uh, 2003, we separate the two strains in two species. Yeah, integratum and genesis. So this is the history of uh, this integratum and genesis. Now, when you have coendemicity <coughs> with, uh, because the type was focused on human genesis. I mentioned that in some of the two uh, species, many with three, many in Africa also for genesis is the same as the integratum as well. So now when you have interaction between hematobium and mansonine, what happens? Is that you have a lot of mixed infection. And in mixed infection, you have the problem of ectopic X because you have this mixture of pairing, uh, the male of one species will collect the female because we know that it's the male that will take the female to the altar where it's the intestine. Mansonite live in the northern region through the intestine, and the female are carried normally by the male. The hematobium live in the vent around the bladder. Male hematobium carry the female there, and the female will be at X. Now, if you have a female mansonite pair with a male intercalatum, no, a hematobium, the male will carry the female uh, in the vent around the intestine, the female will lay the eggs, paternalistic eggs, but this egg, because they are close to the border, will go through the intestine and you have a lot of hematobium eggs in the feces and vice versa. So when you have this mixed infection, you can see the number in red there, the number of mixed infection. Hematobium in, in, uh, in stool and mansonite in the urine. It's a very huge number. And then you see this often. So most of the time, people, uh, do not understand why. But in terms of the interaction, uh, when you increase the meeting, the point of the the mixed infection will increase the number of eggs that are ectopic eggs. And it also have the impact on the diagnostic and also uh, other things. And then we also investigate the study between hematobium and mansonite. Uh, the study clearly show a greater homospecific mate preference, as we demonstrated in the others. Mating competition does occur between hematobium and mansonite, and the former being the more dominant. So in this case, it's hematobium this is dominant in the competition in mansonite. So when you have mixed infection, the outcome is when you treat, and then you have outcome, it's not the same. The infection are not in the same case. And depending on the transmission dynamic, you will have different, completely different figure. And to understand this figure, we need to understand this phenomenon. Uh, this is uh, the case, for example, when you have uh, the efficacy of treatment in a mixed infection area, co-administrative. We investigate a lot of uh, co-administrative area. And then we demonstrate that when you have the plasma cancer, you treat. The blue is uh, mansonite, and then the red one is hematobium. We treat. You have all the two decrease because the plasma cancer has a good effect on the two species. But 
when you see you follow the reinfection rate, depending of the transmission dynamic in each of these area, you may not have the same progression of blue or red. So this I link to all this reinfection pattern, uh, the competition between the two, uh, also the dynamic, uh, how do, yeah. And we don't also have the survival in the snail and the pattern to are not the same. So all these have the impact. So this just to illustrate that this is also important when the second function. Uh, if you imagine, for example, just for Cameroon, these are the repartition of uh, that is the map of 55, long time ago, primary map, global map. You see that you have at that time, the yellow is Guineasis, the red is Mansonai, you have the blue is Hematobium. You can imagine the number of coindemicity between the blue and red. All this coindemicity will lead to severe interaction in humans. Fortunately, the two do not have the dice because. Uh, uh, hematobium and Mansonite they will meet with the pair, but they don't have exhibition, but they will have impact on the dynamic of transmission. And then they will have a pathogenetic X, but most of the time these are not viable. But we will reduce the population depending on the competition. Uh, so this will have a uh, odd type of uh, <coughs> event we have to occur here. I have to understand this beyond the, the prior design to our project. But now let's move beyond the few slides. Because <coughs> now we are talking about one area for activation, etc. So we focus now for the human, but there are many others. But now just give uh, a view to what happens beyond human stoniasis. And then we have all the interactions <coughs> between human and uh, animal stoniasis. Uh, we investigate uh, bodies <laughs> in Cameroon. We demonstrate because before we have no idea what the two bodies there or not. Same with the first publication we did, uh, the one on the top, show that <coughs> we have the Bobis Cameroon, uh, the two sides. I uh, will also demonstrate in the more recent one below that we have abilization between Bobis and hematobium. Uh, the, what is more interesting is that the abilization increases the genetic diversity in the hematobium population. <coughs> so, this was the preliminary study, and then we need to move forward further. Then to investigate this, what is the real importance and the <coughs> importance of this hybrid in the Cameroon? This, at the level of the Africa, the continent, you have all this hybridization and co infection occurring. We have a hematobium in the Galatom in Cameroon. We have, a, when you go to the southern part, hematobium matiai. You have a hematobium uh, mansona rudini. Uh, hematobium uh, curasoni, bovis, etc. So, abbreviation is a huge problem uh, that, has, that is increasing. And then we have to take it into consideration in our control activity, also in the understanding of uh, the transmission of this parasite. And then there are many recent publications there. This is the case in the southern, in the part of, uh, yes, southern part of. Continent where you have uh, this uh, Matiai, uh, uh, you have a Matsonai, you have a Matubium Matiai, you also have a Bovis occurring in a human, um, also in cattle. Ah, when you imagine that this animal and human are in the same habit, habitat sharing the same water resources that we have the most mixture. You can imagine all this mixture that was present in the recent paper also, that we have the equivalent distribution of as in human, livestock and snake population in northern Senegal. Uh, then you have the concept of one care. The concept of one care also show the need to collaborate with the, the, the best aspect and also to better understand of this aspect. Uh, recently in Europe, this is a uh, Corsica. Where recently there was this schizomiasis uh, in Corsica uh, due to the hybrid and then persistent intellectual or tropical disease in Europe. And this called also attention to the European community, also especially in France, that also was very helpful for some of the labs in France because this allowed some funding for the research to investigate this. 
and also call for more attention. Sorry. This habit can cross the border, can cross the continent, etc. If the snail is there, the snail is there, but it's habit. So it's a real problem. So based on this, this is also helpful for advocacy. <coughs> and then, if you go back to the complexity, all this complexity that I mentioned before, and then you go that recently in February, WHO launched a guidelines for the control of emission of human cytogenesis. This guideline has specific, six clear recommendations in different settings, etc. But we want to solve this complexity. It's also important to take into account. What we have been seeing before, all these interactions, otherwise, we focus on one aspect, and then we'll be doing forever. Watch component is important. We have an uh, interaction between uh, uh, human and cytogenesis. Collaboration between uh, and parasitologists for human, multidisciplinarity, many people looking at different aspects. Those are very important. Um, at the end, when we analyze all this, we then say, okay, at the country level, we have to move forward. And to move forward, we have to be more ambitious. Then we have the first country, Denmark, for elimination, not control. Then we have the paradigm shift. For 2021, this is the ambition of the roadmap for elimination. And for this roadmap for elimination, we launched in February, <coughs> just one week after we launched the public guidelines. Uh, it's a big challenge now. The challenge now is to mobilize all stakeholders, all partners, all of you, bring it down to Cameroon and say, okay, now how can we throw this seven key programmatic actions that we identified? The first programmatic action is the complete mapping. Because if you want to expand treatment to, because in the roadmap, it's very clear you have to expand treatment to when it's 10%, you have to go down to two, two years and treat also the adults. But if you don't know where the distribution, you don't know the distribution disease, where is the real problem? It will be a huge waste of drugs. And imagine if you want to just using the district level. Currently in Cameroon, we need 10 million, nine to 10 million transplanted per year. But now we want to use this new guideline, we're going down to two and also include adults, we need 15 million. So, precision mapping is very key. The second one, expand access to treatment. The third one, strengthening health system capacity. That's very important because if, if you want to move to that level, you also have to strengthen your capacity at the implementation level. So that they'll be able to diagnose, to see you, to do other things, to et cetera. And then intensify multi sector action. That's where it's important to watch. Uh, we have been discussing the watch team here yesterday, again today. So I have a lot to do here. But this has to be done, taking into consideration the complexity that was demonstrated before. Monitoring and evaluation is important. For monitoring and evaluation, we need new diagnostic tools, more sensitive tools. So all this area needs. Advocacy and funding, because when you do this, you will need to increase funding. And then to reach this, you need to mobilize more partners, more funding targets yeah, to reach your objective. And at the end, the seven one is very important to encourage country and community ownership. <coughs> because if there is no country ownership and community ownership of this control and elimination of disease, will always make progress bring down the if the ownership at all level, then it's consistent and then it has a maximum impact. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Louise Elber. Um, are there any questions in the room? And if there's any questions online, please just type them in the chat and I will uh, I'll ask them. Um, Poppy? I, I, I should know the answer to this. <laughs> Um, so, at the beginning you were showing, was it the transition from schistosoma intercalatum to schistosoma hematogum? Yeah. Is schistosoma intercalatum only a human parasite? I know, I know, the, I know, sorry, I know that obviously now we think that, you know, nothing is, <laughs> um, but sort of historically, is it majority in human or was it majority in animal? Uh, currently, schistosoma genesis, we meant genesis. Oh, well, so I'm so I wasn't sure. So at the beginning, yeah, because I think you said Guinea, but there was an S dot I. Mm -hmm. You know when you have the dots and you were showing over the years from 1968. Yeah. 
Was that guineensis? Was guineensis. Oh, it was guineensis, not intercalatum. No, it's, 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 it's not the same. It's, it's the same. That's what I was thinking. Okay, so I was no, like, to be clear, that's why I uh, yeah. if I make some emphasis on the split of yeah. guineensis and intercalatum. So based on the work that we've done, because before you have two strands of two strands of uh, intercalatum, one in Cameroon, Gabon, etc., the Lower Guinea. That's what yeah. we call Lower Guinea strand, okay. and the second strand was only in DRC. So ah. far, it's only found in DRC. So, so when we well. when we do yes, it was intercalatum, but then we split the two into you know, the one that was Lower Guinea strand is yeah. now called Guineensis. But it's what we call previously Guineensis. So when we did our the experience show at that time it was still called Guineensis uh, intercalatum. Right, got you. Okay. <laughs> no, right. It was called intercalatum. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And so, because Guineensis is not predominantly a human parasite, right? It, is it? Because I, I think we've known about the, the animal reservoirs for longer than we yeah, know about the Yeah, but currently, we think that Guineensis is coming from, has been captured from animal, but it's become predominantly a human parasite. Because uh, we have few cases where you have an animal reservoir. Uh, in many of the transmission sites, we don't have animal reservoir. Okay, so in but that originally it was, there are many hypotheses from the Some say it was from monkey. And then because the, the monkey <laughs> has less contact with water, this also has impact on the psychiatric behavior. And then you can be captured by human. Right, so so in the area where you saw it go from guineensis to hematobium, does that mean in that area that guineensis is just not? I know this because it was only in humans, but you don't think yeah. it's in the animal reservoirs either or in the no, snails. Since, since then, there is no guineensis anymore. It, it seems to have yeah, gone. It, it's gone. Yeah, it's okay. gone. Uh, this is one I show is the first one to investigate thoroughly for years mm -hmm. guineensis until this actually happened. Okay. So, <laughs> sorry. We have one question online and then I'll take another one in the room, if that's okay. Um, so Francis Nkongo said, saying, um, nice talk. And what is the efficiency of Praziquanto in areas of mixed S. bovis and S. hematobium? Uh, we don't know yet. <laughs> <laughs> because uh, the area where we demonstrate the occurrence of uh, the hybridization <laughs> between bovis and hematobium, you see the results were published uh, this year. And the first discovery was uh, two, three years, two, three years ago. So we don't know yet. So that is okay. why I say there is a lot to do because we don't know, we don't even know the burden of this uh, hybrid, hybrid between the two species. <laughs> I have no idea. I'm just following on from what Poppy was saying. I was just interested to know if, um, if intercalation is it actually, I don't know, just this is just something I just don't know. I know it wasn't in your with intercalatum, is, is the morbidity the same in the humans, or is it worse or less? I mean, was there, did the morbidity problem go up with the increase in the hematobium? Yeah, this was investigated <laughs> in the 80s, uh, where we say sometimes uh, morbidity for hematobium is quite related to the morbidity of maxonine. Uh, somebody, some people say it is also higher for maxonine. There are really few cases. So we, it's, it's not a major public health problem <coughs> compared to the number because all these consumers are the prevalence of the finances here is what around 10 percent of so most of the guys with the treatment now <coughs> is below five percent. So like the morbidity, some investigation was done in the 80s. Uh, since uh, the 90s, there is no Ask another question. Um, uh, with, so then you were later on, you were looking at areas where you had um, mansonine and hematobium cross infections. And I think it was like you said the hematobium was more aggressive. Was it the male hematobium was yeah. more aggressive? So why don't we see then in areas where the hematobium just completely takes over? Is it because did you say that the eggs aren't very viable? Is that what? <coughs> yeah. So in the same way as you had that intercalatum hematobium. <coughs> yeah. Why doesn't the hematobium just kind of like take over? Yeah, answer? because uh, you have two dominant species and the two are competing. <clears throat> and then the two have a very high numbers. Uh, the co infection also is deleted because sometimes you have co infection in humans, but you also have some proper transition sites, maximum, and that are maintained. 
and the human behavior is the same going everywhere. So with the time, when you have the side effect that you have co-infection, you see the proportion of ectopic X is very low, it's about five percent compared to the proportion of the normal X. So this it's not like the same like in the reverse case, because in the reverse case, the chance for immunosis when you have monsonite was zero. Hmm? Because the main monsonite will always take over the female. And in this case, even if dominant, both are competitive. So, yeah. So there will always be, uh, always be some of one. Some of, yeah, some of the one. <laughs> and also due to the fact that the offspring of this has no impact. In the other case, the offspring were hybrid, and hybrid were hematobium like. So this increased more the population of hematobium. They share the offspring are now valuable. But because you still have a lot of the pure, mixed, uh, almost specific pairs, and, and then you go back to the life cycle, the amplification, etc. So I don't know, the impact, that, that might take more time in the future with the treatment. And then you have the reinfection pattern, it's completely different. You have this reinfection by one species is higher than the other, um, depending on the spread of snares, many other factors. Yeah. Maybe when we come back uh, 20 years later, when you do senior research uh, somewhere, maybe you have to do it. <laughs> okay, we have, one, we have another question yeah. online. Sorry. Um, so this is from Francis again. What is the impact of mixed interspecific competition of sex specific worm pairs on egg shedding quantity? Does S hematobium male and S mansoni female produce more eggs than their opposite counterparts? No, they produce less eggs. Ah, because uh, there is no relation between the two. The eggs, because for a female to reproduce, the female has to be bare. So that's why the presence of the, the male will allow the female to grow. And then there will be an egg produced by paternogenesis, paternogenetics. And the paternogenetics is less compared to the normal hybridization and mixture. Yeah, so they will have very few eggs compared to the normal group. Great. Uh, yes? I think I will just follow up. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, the woman prevalence, if you see the human prevalence. This is the station where you have the human prevalence. You start from this level for intercalatum. This one was zero. And then when this is going down, the other is going up. Then you have the, when it becomes stable, you have one species only. And then, then the species is more higher. Okay, so we can't really infer there on this uh, effectivity, so the effectivity potential of the species might be superior to the other. No, it's not the effectivity, but it's the competition. <laughs> this is the competition, because here you have the hybrids. So with the time, when you have uh, one is uh, more dominant in the pairing, and the hybrid is more valuable in one sense than the others, because the hybrid will give hematobium like. So at the second generation, you have more hematobium like than compared to the others. Then with the numbers, the competition will increase, and then you have a decrease of the pure species. And then in the middle, you have the mixture of the pure um, and also hybrid. And when the order will disappear, the hybrid, the, the order is dominant. We increase, I will increase more than the, <laughs> the first one. So at the end, hematogen is urinary, will reach ozone here. It's above 80%. Yeah. So if there was no treatment, uh, it would have been around, yeah, because the treatment is going down. Okay, we will have one final question, I think. Um, thanks so much uh, for the wonderful work. The control of consciousness is great. Uh, you have one concern, uh, especially in the group where there was a technology. Yeah. There, in the other observing for the 
factors keep you in which people not favor uh, the character of the contribution maybe that which we can use maybe future we can order that we can change uh, the value of other species of because now it's a climate change and we have been maybe there could be those factors that they are not favoring this other thank you thank you yeah this is going back to to this <coughs> So you go back to this, all these factors, and then you move to abiotic factors, and then you move to biotic factors, you move then to the human behavior, and then you move also to the snail parasite interaction. So the presence of snail will also play a role. Uh, for scaly, uh, genesis only have one species of scaly, so the one first. Hematidium have four species of snail. Involved in transmission between the country. Pascal, uh, Trumpetus, Bubosis, Senegalensis, and Capitanensis. The only one have only one species. So all this also will play around the country. And then the competition, for the factors. I'm sure that there are other factors, the survival, and the snail also survival for Hematodium is nowhere compared to, to Hematodium. Hmm? The snail secari of uh, Intercalatum Guinensis. They will swim uh, on the top of the water. The other will swim everywhere. And when they swim on the top of the water, their survival is very low because of the sun. So when they swim there, after some time, when you put it in the microscope, they will aggregate and then they will not be infected anymore. So all these factors play a role. So the, snail, the psychiatric behavior, the competition, the environmental factor, the snail, etc. But the human factor is remain also because one is through the feces and the other is urine. In the caladon, genesis is through the feces. Hematobium is through the urine. The contamination with the urine is very easy. The children play in the water compared to the others. So there are many. But this is just one we provide evidence that the other we can speak later. But we have to back. Great. Thank you so much for a wonderful talk. Um, and thank you all for coming. Um, so we have two seminars next week, one on Tuesday at 2 p.m. from Christian Jurek, and then one on Friday at 4 p.m. from uh, Philippa Rioja from Berkeley. So please come along to both of those. They're going to be great. Um, and thank you, Liz Ever. Thank you.